uh, and then it continues um oh this is an interesting one so yeah let, let me react to this this is um dave clark uh very influential techno dj in the scene somebody who was also a great producer and remixer put out a pretty cool statement in terms of um giving his piece or giving his um opinion on these illegal events are happening at the moment there's been a bit of a war between the scene and i guess the business techno people or the wider community at large and the business techno heads there's been an abundance of dj who have who DJs who are basically being flown around uh, different parts of the world to play in to play at questionable events in countries who probably shouldn't be putting on events of this stature some of the djs have been kind of smart enough not to post some of the content of them playing at these gigs but some of these people have been you know um self-absorbed enough to kind of post this content on their feed with no sense of civic responsibility i guess for the current situation we're in at large and just kind of looking after their own pocket which you're meant to do i guess but there is probably a wider concerns here than just your ability to play a gig in another country and get some money in your pocket right you're obviously going to put other people at risk so um dave clark gave his opinion on it via facebook and i'm going to read you some of his statement here let's see da, 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 da. we didn't fall because i haven't actually finished it. it says the following he says very disappointed in the scene to be clear i'm not talking about any dj that has true financial worries and has to take work that is their decision alone however there are a few top flight djs who financially do not need the money but are in the fomo pact um pushed out by their managers no doubt and djing in environments that are far from legal this is the most interesting part of it that's something that's really been bugging me because i think in the beginning i was one of these optimists i was thinking oh yeah when things open up it's going to mean it's going to be restricted travel so all the local scenes are going to pop off local communities are going to thrive because they're going to utilize all the local djs and local artists such as myself because i'm you know i'm a smaller um, entry level kind of guy operating on my local scene so i'd imagine oh yeah, it's going to give people like myself more opportunity to play because it's going to mean there's less there's going to be less mid-level to top level djs flying in from different parts of the world to come and play and they're going to utilize their you know overabundant pool of talent djs all, all across the uk and in london and europe to kind of make that sustain that scene uh build up where it needs to be and then kind of reinvent it uh in a whole new different light a light that doesn't really rely on top level high ticket selling um artists who basically play the same stuff again and again that's what i would hope to happen but actually what's happened is that the events that have started off first because the promoters don't want to take any risks and they don't want to uh risk put on an event getting all the pa getting get, you know hiring all the equipment um you know being liable for the insurance and all that good stuff and then get somebody that's unknown that can't move tickets they don't want to take that risk so they'd rather book a really high selling artist a high ticket moving selling artist get them over and then take the risk of taking you know the reputational damage on social but at least they're going to be able to cover their initial investment that's what's actually happening and then of course on the other side of it as well the djs themselves who again you can't blame the promoters let's say you know let's make your money if your government says it's safe it's safe that's all you can do but it's the djs too it's mostly the ones it's ones that are like you know the ones that travel on private jets all the time the ones that have like big corporate sponsorships like porsche and bmw and all this sort of good stuff those are, those are the ones that are taking all the gigs at the moment now they're the ones that have kind of you know doing those posts where like oh it's five months so since i've been djing i can't believe my first gig since my, all this sort of nonsense and it's like huh if anyone can put up if again not counting anyone's pocket because it's not my business but you would imagine if these guys are getting paid 10 grand plus per set like it makes you wonder what some people do with their money if they're really again maybe it's not maybe they're because i remember someone was saying the other day to me i've got who it was says something like oh these high level djs aren't like normal people right part of their kind of ability to function in society is their ability to go and play places right they can't function without playing a set like someone like a shark the way is basically begging their booking manager to book them as many places as they can book them she wants to work really hard she wants to kind of run herself through the wall she would play just about anywhere as long as they're paying her fee um so for them having to kind of step back and not play it just doesn't compute so they'll just do whatever they can to kind of um go against that fair enough but some of these people are like you know come on like you don't if, if you're if you're if you're like um if you're a card of a low boss you don't need to dj anywhere you shouldn't need to anyway and it makes you question what these guys do with their money you shouldn't really because it's not your business but it makes you question it 
says um culture from all these um legitimate clubs events that close their doors face hardship by putting forward their own greedy business ethics above all and sundry um those international djs that do these parties have basically spat on those legitimate industries they are spat at the backline crew that made them look like a hero and for what a successful release sponsored post on social takes uh talking about how they have missed their gigs fucking idiots this is not over and they have probably made this their worst they probably made this worse on their watch but hey great gig of course that's that's the thing that's really and i think dax j played recently as well and he's catching a bit of flack not really though let me not say he's catching flack people are catching flack mostly on twitter i feel like on facebook and on instagram on their own feeds people are just happy to have them out again i guess it's because there is a part of me that thinks a lot of these people that go into these events are really having a hard time dealing with the reality they're in at the moment and if you give them an opportunity to kind of tap out they'll take it and if they see a dj who they kind of represent who's representative of like things maybe getting back to normal or escapism they're just going to latch onto it and say like hey i'm going to ignore all the all the nonsense or the, the reality situation i'm just going to pin my hopes on you so that's why some of the comments on some of these posts especially on you go on dax j's post where he posted about him you know first gig flying three times in a week da, da, da. it's mostly love for the most part unless they're just deleting comments i don't know he says um i would respect them more if they actually were um consp uh, what's that conspiracy thinkers i believe as things stand this virus is real and five years look uh, sparrows and made a stupid stand but this is only about the ego and their feet which is true in it if they were conspiracy thinkers that would make it a bit more easier digestible like fair enough they're just kooks that is what it is but it's not it's not like an anti-lockdown rave it's like people raving um in spite of there being a global lockdown and in spite of there being a global mandate not to gather in big large groups of people they're just doing it because they want to do it and because they want to go play out they don't want to be at home especially the ones that have families are the ones you should really question like you must hate your family a lot it's like you know what people say about runners like if you run like 50 miles a week right like what you're running away from if you're purposely trying to play now in this current pandemic we're in at the moment and you have no fear of flying you're going to different countries hanging out hugging people you know um not wearing a mask doing all that sort of stuff your fam your your life at home must be really really bleak or you must not like what you've got at home your family your children like it must be really bad um it says yeah i've been watching like many in our industry and what has been happening uh so many coincidences uh in belgium there was a there was a party very near antwerp we sent out an email containing uh whatever that word says basically social distancing measures and face masks are not obligatory that's insane then a few weeks later antwerp enters curfew uh, enters into curfew in paris there was some strange parties too yet possession parties they've not been given the shit now paris has also seen the uptake in the virus and yes of course italy now a big uptake in virus which is which you can't argue against the the science is clear in all these places where they've reopened the clubs and they've reopened places where people can gather in place in large groups and in in large amounts they've kind of had a second spike or they've had like an up an uptick in cases and they've had to close them things again that's that's the fact we can't argue against that so whether or not we attribute it to the clubs to the raves or just to people kind of going out more on mass we don't know but what we know for sure is that once they reopen things and get and they gave people a bit more license to gather in open airs a bit more freely cases went up again um he says here he said we all miss playing but not to play but to play these events so as international DJ of repute has put down our industry in the eyes of those that look for any reason not to make it easy. And it's true as well, because I, honestly, I'm into a lot of stuff, right? Like, you know, my, my metal stuff, my indie bands. And I, I can't think of any other scene apart from the electronic music scene or the dance music scene where there are people who are purposely trying to uh, go against the rules to put on events for people. I don't, I can't think of anything. I've not seen any secret indie band gigs. I've not seen any secret um, metal concerts or punk shows. Like nothing. I've not seen anything. The only people that are really trying to push it and trying to make it look like things are back to normal are these high flying. And again, it's the big DJs. It's not the people that are on the bottom or the mid tier who maybe need the money, right? Because essentially, you know, even if you're even if you're playing for a thousand pounds per gig after taxes, after paying your agent and stuff, it's not a lot of money. You're still kind of living paycheck to paycheck, right? And being out of work for six months, regardless of how many thousands you get paid per hour, it's still not going to be enough to sustain you. So I understand, especially if people are living. In countries where they have to pay for their own health care cool do your thing but if you're a person that takes a private jet who has a car service who your management pays for your your ground transport and all that sort um you get like it doesn't make any sense you get flown around to fashion weeks like why are you playing now you can chill you can legitimately chill you can chill if you want to so you're clearly playing mostly and again 
if if you're playing for the money, then there's already a problem there, isn't it? For sure. But if you're playing to run away from your family, of course, it's a bigger problem. It's like, God damn it, these people. Um, so to these events, um, without doing them properly, I saw one event here in Amsterdam. It was a strange, but done properly. Other clubs like Fuse and Compass have been trying their best to get these strange times and bring some joy in the not ideal circumstances. It's selfish. And please do not see yourself as a legitimate rebel to quote Mike Zayma. The underground raves in the 90s were a response to an underground movement to spotlight techno and house music because venues wouldn't book it. It wasn't a backdoor way to throw events during a global health crisis, which is true. Quite referencing, quit referencing the past justify destroying our future you're just doing this for ego whoever's saying that at the moment now is saying that, oh this is a we're really i haven't seen this but if this is a sentiment going around with some people that oh we're reliving the old school rave scene you're insane that means you haven't done your history you haven't done your homework go and watch some documentary read some books like the rave scene wasn't um a way for it, it, the, the, the rave scene didn't have bloody you know mike don't get me wrong tiesto maybe at his pump might have played in under some underground raves but you know, this isn't a way for Tiesa to play more gigs as like a, a, a political statement. If this is anything but that. Uh, it says, of course, there are inconsistencies in all of this and it doesn't feel fair. But by doing these gigs, give ammunition to authorities to further delay events, which is true. Because they're always, they're going to be the last thing to come back, people, right? Unfortunately, I love going out. I love nightlife. I've been to Bergheim more times than I can count on my both of my hands. But I know and I've resigned myself to the fact that I won't even be able to play a gig let alone go to a rave maybe until next year or until the vaccine's been found. We know that our industry is fucked, right? Until until something changes in terms of this virus, we are in the dumpster as it is. So these events are, if anything, maybe pushing back that date of reopening everything. And again, it's like, you know, it's not... The fair word is a bit cucky to use, but it really isn't fair, is it? Because we all want to party. We all want to go and have a good time. No one wants to be at home, you know, smelling their own farts. We want to be outdoors doing stuff, but we're not. So for you to go out and do it because you want to do it and because you have the means to do it, it's just unfair to everybody else because no one has the opportunity to do that. So to do that, you know what I mean? Um, Excuse me, I said, and now despite feeling pragmatic that perhaps small events could come back this year, I severely doubt if many, if any major festivals will happen within the Central Europe block next year either, which is true because all the events have been postponed until next year, but there's no guarantee it's going to happen, right? How many bloody airlines are closing down and head offices are closing and things are winding down and i don't know if the insurance companies are going to want to you know write off on these things either and he makes another quote he says oh uh hardly a word about these things in the main dance press um happening for eight weeks now yet we have to look at more live versions of the press like enemy and talk about smash mouth and chain smokers perhaps some of these ticket sales went through the dance music press who knows yeah true that's a good point resident advisors have been utterly quiet on this regard which makes sense anyway isn't it? they have to kind of look after their they have to kind of um they they know where their bread is buttered, isn't it? They know where their bread is buttered. They're not gonna they're not gonna jeopardize the bag just to kind of make some sort of um moralistic statement. They're gonna pick and choose their battles in that regard. But bloody hell, man. What a great response from Dave Clark. And again, echoes a lot of the thoughts I've been having concerning the situation.